Hello and welcome to another class here with me, Anna English, broadcasting to you live from London. Today I am teaching you about the classroom. So literally, if you are someone who goes into a classroom, whether you're a student or a teacher, then this lesson is going to be particularly helpful for you. But if you're learning English overall, you will find this lesson helpful. So this is English Like a Native. If you are new here and you would like to learn English, you'd like to learn to speak fluently and more like a native, then please press the subscribe button and the bell notification button so you don't miss any future lessons. So let's get straight into it, shall we? As always, I have made lots of notes, which I'll be going through right now with you. If you would like a copy of these notes, I'm giving them away as a thank you to anyone who donates to this channel and helps this channel to grow. You can donate via a donation button in the description box, or if you're live with me right now, via the super chat button, which is next to the emoji sign next to the comment section. So without further ado, let's get started. So in the classroom, we're first going to look at just some basic vocabulary. I'm sure most of you know most of these words, but we're going to cover it just in case. So if there are any words here that you're not familiar with, then do let me know by leaving a message in the um, chat room. Obviously, patrons, you can chat to me in Skype. I'm here to receive your messages. So we start off with the word book. A student needs books to work with. We have a couple of different types of book. We have a normal book. A book is anything with writing in. If it's got text in it, it's a book. I don't have a book to hand to show you, but I'm sure we all know what a book is. And you might hear talk of a textbook. A textbook. A textbook is like a workbook something that you'd be given by a school or something you would buy um, from a shop or on the internet that instructs you, that helps you to learn your topic. So in schools, of course, there are many textbooks and a different textbook for every different subject that you're learning. I'm sure as English students, you have English textbooks. So we also might talk about notebooks. A notebook is something you write in. So I have right here, I have a notebook. A notebook, it's something that I keep my notes in. It's a small notebook. I haven't written it down, but you would, you would also potentially have a notepad, slightly different. A notepad is usually about A4 size, a bit bigger normally. If you talk about a notepad, I imagine it to be bigger. But a book has covers on it, and it opens like a book, and then you have a notepad, a notepad and a notebook. A notepad tends to be open, so there tends to not be... A notepad wouldn't have a cover like this, it would just be open, so that you just write on it and then you rip the pages off. A notepad. All right, we okay so far? Um, do you use the word journal in the UK? We do, but journal has many different meanings. If you're talking about for as a, as a diary, um, we would more often use the word diary. See, a diary is like your schedule. It, it keeps you on track. Also, a diary is where you can write your thoughts and your um, experiences. So we would normally use a diary, a diary. And when you're at school, you probably have a homework diary, a, a, a notebook, that tells that you can write in your homework from each day. In Malaysia, we don't use notepads in school. That's very interesting. What do you use if you don't use notepads? Um, your pronunciation is very clear. I like your idea of what you want. Thank you very much. Um, okay, let's carry on. So, back to the notes. We have a bookcase, of course, a place to keep the books, a bookcase. I'm sure there's one in every classroom, in fact. Then certain books that you would almost definitely find within a school would be a dictionary, a dictionary. A dictionary is a list of words and the word meanings. I'm sure everybody here knows 
what a dictionary is. Um, and thesaurus. A thesaurus is a book that you can look up a word and then find lots of other words that are similar to that word. So it helps you to find different words with the same meanings or similar meanings. And then we have, of course, a chair, a chair to sit on. And we have a desk or a table. Now, um, everyone knows what a table is, I'm sure. A table has four legs. You can put things on it. You can sit at the table. You eat dinner at the table. You also have tables in schools. Um, but normally, when we're talking about the tables that you sit and work at in school, we refer to them as desks. There are specific pieces of furniture that are called desks. They usually have little drawers in them or the lid of the, the top of the table will lift up and there's a place where you can keep notepads or books or things inside. And that, would, that kind of table would be called a desk. That's a desk. But we also refer to just normal tables in school. If you're sitting at it to work at, then we would say desk. Sit down at your desks. We would normally refer to a table as a desk. Um, okay, so let me just have a quick look, see what my patrons are saying. Hello, patrons. I hope you're all well. Um, Fi fine and that is why um, I don't understand that Andreas but okay Anna what are where are your beautiful earrings and earrings has two R's in it by the way Eric so make sure you add an extra R um I I I just didn't think to put my earrings on today <laughs> but thank you okay so other things you'd find in the classroom a clock of course and lots of students when they are bored do something called clock watching clock watching it means you're constantly watching the clock to see when this lesson will be over so clock watching is if you're bored you're looking at the clock to see when the lesson will be finished if you are in a well-equipped school you might have a school computer in some schools now students have computers each every student would have a computer it certainly wasn't the case when i was at school um, and then you might need a pen drive if you're working with a computer. A pen drive, I'm just seeing if I've got one here, I don't seem to. A pen drive is a little hard drive that you plug into the computer to take files off the computer and take somewhere else. A pen drive, just a little stick that you, I can't, do I have one here? Uh, no, I don't have one here to show you, but a pen drive is a little thing that you stick into the computer. Of course, if you're in a traditional school, like I was, where there aren't computers for every student, which is the case in most schools, then you would need a traditional pen, a pen, and you will need some form of paper. Normally, people use the size A4. A4 um, is quite simply, like, I've got some notes on here, uh, quite simply a piece like that. An A4 piece of paper. An A4 piece of paper. Uh, Cornell has never heard of a pen drive. Oh, okay. Well, that's what we call it, a pen drive. Or a, a little... Yeah, we call it a pen drive. Um, it's my first class with you. Hello from Guatemala. Hello, Jose. If you are here for the first time, then please do press subscribe. And if you're enjoying it, finding it useful, then please click the thumb button. Because you know... I love a thumb, <laughs> as Long knows. <laughs> uh, thank you for that, Long. Okay, so let me carry on. Da, 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 da. We are, we're talking about pens and A4 paper. If you have lots of pieces of paper that are loose and not in a pad, then you might need a paper clip. A paper clip clips together all your pieces of paper. It's just a little piece of metal that's the way that it holds paper together when you use it. And in some cases you might prefer to use a pencil or if you're very young and you're in a, a young school like a primary school or um, a nursery then you would use a pencil instead of a pen. A pencil has lead and a pen uses ink. This is the pencil, 
the um, the point is lead. So we talk about the point of a pencil is lead. You write with lead, um, and if the pencil has broken or if it doesn't work, it's because the pencil is blunt. The pencil is blunt. And um, if you then use a pencil sharpener, I have one here in fact, I'm going to sharpen my pencil for you. A pencil sharpener will sharpen your pencil. A pencil sharpener sharpens your pencil. Okay, so it makes your pencil sharp. I think I need to empty my pencil sharpener. Um, good question, English vibe, vib, vibe. Do you prefer writing with a pen or a pencil? Um, I think a pen, but it depends. Some pens have very leaky nibs. The end of a pen is called a nib, by the way. Even some natives don't know that. The end of a pen is called a nib. Um, I don't think I have a pen. Oh, yes, I do. My, my pen broke, so I have a very skinny pen. That's the inside of a pen, basically. But the end of the pen is called a nib, a nib. And some nibs are leaky, which means they leak ink and it makes the paper very messy. So in those cases, I prefer pencil. How about you? What do you prefer, pen or pencil? Okay, so um, you have, as I said, a pencil and then you also potentially use a highlighter. A highlighter is a bright colored ink pen and it will it'll color in bright yellow or orange or pink or green or even bright blue and it's so that you can highlight over some written words so a highlighter you highlight words with a highlighter and then we have um, a rubber or an eraser so if you're working in pencil you might need to rub out your writing and so you would use a rubber or Americans tend to call it an eraser, but we can call it an eraser too. Uh, the end of my pencil is an eraser, or a rubber, a rubber. Um, there is a pencil sharpener, we've already talked about that. A ruler, you'll use a ruler to make straight lines, to draw straight lines, and also to measure. So if you need to measure something, you use a ruler, a ruler. Okay. Then if you need to cut paper or something else, you might need to cut string or bits of tinsel or something, then you would use scissors. Scissors. And the pronunciation? Scissors. Not skizzers. Some people say sk skizzers. It's scissors. Okay, so make sure you get that one right. And then if you've written on A4 paper or any kind of paper and you need to put holes in so that you can put it into a file, then you will need to use a hole punch. A hole punch basically just puts holes into your paper so that you can file it in a, in a folder. Okay. Um, would you mind mentioning a different ruler? Um, of course, the word ruler can also be used to talk about someone who rules, someone who leads. They are the ruler. If they rule a country or a group of people, they're the ruler. Um, but in this case, a ruler is an instrument. A ruler in a classroom would be an instrument. Okay, let's have a look at my patrons. What are you guys saying here? I've got, um, glad to see you back. What's the difference between college and university in the UK? It's to do with the level of education. So in college, college you do two years normally, you study A-levels or that kind of level of education. It's where you go after you finish your high school or secondary school education. So at 16 years old, you can then go to college and do your A-levels. So it's after school. Then once you hit 18, usually, sometimes people go a little later and they're older, then you go to university. University is the highest form of education. It's where you go to do your degrees and then your master's degrees and your doctorates. It's the highest level of education. So we go school, college, university. I hope that answers your question. Um, um, if you pick up your pen and your pen isn't working, then you say, uh, my pen's run out of ink or my pen's broken. Okay. Um, oh, let me just see what else we're saying here. Can you call a highlighter also a marker? No, it's different, gal. So a highlighter literally highlights. It's brightly colored 
and it won't um, it won't cover as in it won't mask the writing underneath. So I would normally, if I'm using a highlighter, it's because I've written a word. So I've written a word, and I, you can't really see that, and I want to highlight the word, so I'll cover it with a, a highlighter, and the highlighter will allow the word to show through. A marker tends to be just thick, dark ink that will just go over that and cover it and mask it, so you wouldn't be able to see that word. So a marker is a thick, dark pen, and a highlighter is for the purpose of highlighting. Hello Harrison, don't worry that you're late, that's okay. Um, what is a foundation course? A foundation course is a course that you do to access a higher level course. So maybe you didn't get the, the grades you needed from your exams to take the course you wanted to take. So you do a foundation course, which is normally a shorter course, that just gives you those extra skills that you need to progress to a higher course. Um, okay, I'm going to just take one more question from my patrons and then I'll carry on with the notes. Can I just use punch? No need to add whole, is that correct? Um, I guess you could, in a classroom situation, if you say, I need the punch. I, I guess we would know what you're talking about, but in my school, we would always say whole punch, whole punch. Can I have the whole punch? I need the whole punch. Um, I don't know. Anyone else who went to an English-speaking school, would you just call it a punch or would you call it a high, a high punch? A whole punch. Let me know. Um, how do you pronounce the word comfortable? Comfortable. Comfortable. Um, I'm sorry if I'm speaking strangely. I have a big ulcer in my mouth today. I'm not sure if anyone knows what an ulcer is, but it's basically a sore. I, I, I bit my cheek. I bit my cheek earlier today and it's turned into a big sore in my mouth. So if I'm talking a little strange, it's because my mouth is so sore. Okay. So let's carry on with the note, shall we? So we have um, a hole punch. Then we have a stapler. If you don't want to use um, a paper clip to keep your pieces of paper together, because a paper clip comes off and on very easily, you might want to use a stapler. A stapler puts staples into your paper. So pieces of metal to hold your papers together. They're called staples. Staples. And you use a stapler, which is a machine that puts staples through your paper. Okay? So, final few words and then we're going to move on. Um, we've got uniform. So most children, particularly in the UK, most of us have to wear a uniform to attend primary school and high school. It's not so much the case once you get to college and um, university, because you're 16 and older, you're considered an adult, and so they don't expect you to wear a uniform. In some cases you do wear a uniform, but... Um, but Sorry, that's my housemate, you can probably hear, who's coughing and spluttering in the bathroom. He's not very well, bless him. Um, but yes, as younger students, we're expected to wear uniforms in most schools. I'm just going to shut this door so that you can't hear all that. Two seconds. There we go. No more coughing and spluttering, hopefully. <laughs> So, um, a uniform, yes, normally a uniform will consist of a shirt and a tie, um, a blazer sometimes, and trousers or skirts depending on the school. Um, did you have to wear a uniform at your school? Let me know. I quite liked my uniform. Um, Amal hated her uniform colour, it didn't flatter me at all. Oh bless you, <laughs> well, it's done now, hopefully you don't have to wear a uniform anymore. Um, if you don't wear a uniform at school, do you get suspended? Yes, so they do take it very, very seriously. You have to turn up in your uniform or you will be in a lot of trouble. Um, what do you call the bits that come out of the puncher? So out of the whole puncher? I don't know, Just it's just bits of paper. Rubbish, I would imagine. We call it rubbish. Um, could you please pronounce ordinary and general? Ordinary and general. Okay, so let's carry on with the classroom vocabulary. So we've had uniform. Most students also follow a timetable. A timetable. 
The timetable is basically a plan of where you have to be at what time on what days. So on Monday, I have to take geography at nine o'clock, English at 10 o'clock, history at 11 o'clock, and then we have a break and then home economics or technology or science, German, Spanish, whatever the order of your classes are, you will need a timetable to keep you in order so you know where you have to be. And so most students will have a timetable. Okay, next, you also will have to deal with deadlines. You'll be given lots of um, work to do, homework to do. And um, you might have to do coursework if you're getting close to doing an exam. And so you would have to adhere, adhere to a deadline. Adhere to a deadline. A deadline is basically a point in time where your work is due. The point where your work is due. Oh, bless you. Julia has just sent over a two euro super chat. Thank you so much, Julia, for your support. As always, you're very supportive of this channel and community. So Julia, as you know, that anyone who sends a super chat will receive the notes that I've prepared. All you have to do is drop me an email and I will send those notes to you. Thank you so much. Very kind. So a deadline. I hate working to deadlines, but usually working to a deadline makes me more productive. It makes me focus on the work that needs to be done. Sometimes if you miss the deadline or if you're having a difficult time finishing the work, then you would be asked, you would ask for an extension. You would ask for an extension. And an extension is basically just an extended amount of time. So you basically just say, I need more time. I need more time. And um, so for example, if I had to write an essay that needed to be due, that needed to be handed in on Monday, my deadline is Monday, but I am moving house and I've got a sore in my mouth and I don't feel very well. So I say to my teacher, teacher, please, can I have an extension? I don't think I'll finish the work by Monday. Please, can I have an extension? And then hopefully they'll give me an extension and say, all right, you can hand the work in on Wednesday, but no later. And I'll go, thank you very much, thank you. Um, do they still have prefects and head boys and head girls? Yes, they do. That's a really good point. I will um, make a note of that. Prefects. Prefects. Is that how you spell it? I've never written it down, actually. So, prefects. Okay, let me just write this here. Prefects. Head boy. Head girl. Um, and then I'll do a highlight of that one. Do, 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 do. There we go. Okay, so we have, of course, students. Students, you all know what students are. Students are learners. So we have many students at this school. We have many learners. You are all here, I imagine, you're all students of some form because you're here to learn, so you are students. If you go to school, you are a student. If you are taking any kind of class, if it's a dance class, then you are a student. Um, so, you might also then hear student being referred to as a pupil. It's exactly the same thing. A pupil or a student. Exactly the same thing. No real difference. Okay? So pupils, yes, exactly the same. And within your student body, the student body is the group of students, the student body, you will find prefects. A prefect is a prefect is a very good student, someone who has um, behaved very well, who does all their work, who is performing well in class. And they are asked, uh, they're chosen by the teachers to help the teachers with the teacher's work, basically. So the prefects, for example, will um, set a good example. They, that's a good word, a good phrase, actually, to set a good example. They set a good example for other students. They also might be on, like, litter patrol at lunchtime. So they might be the person who goes around and says, excuse me, did you just drop some litter? Pick it up or I'll tell the teacher. Or they might um, help out with certain events or help the teachers um, during exam times or something like that. So prefects help the teachers. And then one boy and one girl from the oldest year of school will be chosen each year to represent the
the school. So they will be head boy and head girl. So you have head boy and head girl, and they just represent the school. It's just a way of um, highlighting the well-behaved students so that everybody has the aspiration to be like them. I, I'm going to be on my best behaviour because I want to be head boy or head girl when I'm in my final year. Um, okay, I think you've spelt eraser wrong. Okay, let me have a look. You know me with my dyslexia, I'm always making spelling mistakes, so... Oh, of course I have. Eza, what is that? Uh, <laughs> eraser. There we go. Thank you for that. If you do spot any spelling mistakes, then please help me out and let me know. Um, do you pronounce the T in prefects? Prefix. Prefects. Yes, kind of. It's, it's, it's kind of wet with the S. Prefects. Prefects. Okay, so with all those students, you need a teacher. And a teacher, obviously, is someone who teaches the students. Now, something you must be aware of, I'm always correcting my students with, a teacher teaches, a student learns. I'm often being asked, teacher, will you learn me English? Teacher, learn me English. I don't learn you, I teach you. You learn from me, but I teach you. So teacher, please teach me English. That is what you would say. The teacher teaches, the student learns, okay? So just think of it in that way. Teacher teaches, learners learn, okay? So um, obviously there are many types of teachers for different subjects. If you are a teacher, then you would normally, if you are talking to someone about what job you do, you would talk about what type of teacher you are. So I would say, I'm an English teacher. If you teach geography, you say, I'm a geography teacher. If you teach German, I'm a German teacher. I'm a PE teacher, a teacher who teaches physical education, so sports. I'm a science teacher. I'm a biology teacher. Um, so you would always put your subject, or you generally put your subject in front of the word teacher. Um, what is the difference between a teacher and a professor? I'm not 100% sure, and I don't hear professor being used very often in the UK, so I'd be interested to know. So if someone wants to look up, in fact, I can do it right now. Da, 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 da. So um, a professor is a university academic of the highest rank. They are, hold, they are the holder of a university chair. So a professor is someone who has gone to the very top of the university. They are academic and they've got some form of university, university degree, a very high level. Um, or you call a university teacher in America would be called a professor. That's probably why I haven't heard it much here in the UK because it's more American. It's more American. Okay, oh lovely, we have 176 people here. How many thumbs do we have? Should we have a look? Da 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 da, 107, not bad. Not bad. Okay, let's carry on with these notes, shall we? Um, so, the head teacher, or sorry, the head, so you can actually say head teacher. Head teacher, headmaster, headmistress for a lady, so headmaster is a man. Head teacher is male or female. Headmaster is a man. Headmistress is a lady. And a principal is also a way to describe the head of the school, the person, the teacher who is in charge of the whole school. Okay? Um, great, that's nice and easy. Um, Dennis has mentioned a teacher's pet. It's a really good point, thanks for bringing that up. A teacher's pet is the teacher's favorite. So we often would tease each other at school and say, Oh, look at you, teacher's pet. Or, I want to be teacher's pet. <laughs> it's to be the favourite of the teacher. If the teacher seems to favour you, you are the teacher's pet. Um, a lecturer is someone who gives lectures. Again, normally it's at university. You don't tend to have lectures at a school. You have classes at school. So a lecturer is for university. Um, let me just write in here teacher's pet because I think that's a good one. Uh, copy this, paste, 
teachers, we do the apostrophe because it's possessive, teachers pet. Um, the teachers favorite student. Okay, lovely, let's carry on. So we have the word attend. So we, we tend to attend class. When we're talking about going to class, we'd say, I'm going to class, I need to go to class. I don't want to be late for class, so I need to go to class. Or you talk about attending class, I'm attending a class tomorrow. Um, normally, if you are, if you are a full-time student, then you just say, I'm going to class. I've, I've, got cl I've got class, I've got a class starting now, so I'm going to attend class. Um, if you didn't go to class, then you say, I didn't go to class, or I, I don't intend to go to class, I won't go to class. But if you are going to a one-off lesson, maybe if you're someone who takes the odd dance lesson or um, a private English lesson, perhaps, then you could say, um, I'm going to attend, I'm going to attend a class today. I'm going to attend uh, an English class later. Um, it would normally be a group lesson as well. It, you wouldn't say it for a private lesson, you'd say it for a group lesson. I've got, I've got a class to attend. I must attend class. Now, lots of you have been writing disattend. We never use that word. We never say disattend. You don't disattend a class. You attend a class or you don't go. I didn't go. Um, okay. So, uh, when you get to class, when you are in attendance, when you are in attendance, when you're attending class, your teacher will normally start the class by taking the register. We use this verb for this action. You take the register. So the register is just a checklist of student names so that the teacher knows who is present and who is not. So, um, hello class, please sit down and listen carefully while I take the register. And they do a roll call of names and you'd say, you'd say, um, Julia, and she'd go, present, or yes miss, go, um, English five, present, Harrison, Present. Uh, Guatam. Present. Diego. Present. Okay, so that is me taking the register. And when I finished, then I have I have taken the register. I've taken the register. Okay, so let's carry on. Oh, hang on. I've got a message from my students here, my patrons, um, teachers' pet. How do you call the paper that you get at the end of a semester with all your final marks? Um, your certificate. So when you finished, we don't say semester either here in the UK. We say term, the end of term. So in a typical, in a typical UK school, you have three terms, the autumn term, the spring term and the summer term. And then we have a summer holiday or a summer break which is a long holiday from the education system, and we come back to start the autumn term um, in the September time. And so we have terms, um, and when you've finished and you've done your exams, you will get a certificate at the end to say what marks you got, a certificate or a school report. Thank you, Julia. Yes, a school report, depending. So and with an exam, you get a certificate. If you're um, getting a piece of paper to say how well you've done. Maybe your teacher will put some notes and say, um, Bobby was very naughty this term. He needs to try harder. That's a school report. So it's a report on your behavior, on your level of work, on your attendance, um, to go home to your parents to say, um, they've been very good or they've not been very good. Um, report card tends to be more American. We just have reports, school, my school report. A report card, I think, is more American. Um, do UK schools have separate have separate pupils in forms? Um, I, I'm not sure what you mean. We do separate students into forms. So you have a form, which is your group that you take your initial register with, um, and your te your form teacher will look after you in entirety, your process throughout the school. Um, and then you go to individual classes separately with other groups, depending on your level and ability. Okay, I'm going to carry on because I have a feeling this is going to be a very long lesson otherwise. <laughs> um, so you've taken the register. When the class has finished, 
you might hear the teacher saying, class is dismissed. Let me change this to is. Class is dismissed. The class is dismissed. This means you can go. That means the, the session has ended and you've been, you're being sent away. So you've been dismissed. Class is dismissed. You can go. Off you go. See you later. Hurry up. Get to your next class. So dismissed. Dismissed. If you are naughty and you don't do as you are told, then you may find yourself serving a detention. And here I put the sample sentence, you'll be placed in detention if you carry on misbehaving. So a detention is to detain students after school has finished as punishment. So if you've been naughty, you've been given, you've been given a detention, I give you a detention. That means um, at a certain time, on a certain day, maybe tonight, after school, you will stay for one hour and you might have to write lines or you might have to read a book or do something really boring normally as punishment for misbehaving. Um, so most, most children find that very, very upsetting because they just want to get out of school as quickly as they can. So um, you may have blackboards in your school. A blackboard is literally a blackboard which is in front of the class and the teacher can write on it. Um, and to write on the blackboard, you are going to need chalk. Pay attention to the pronunciation. Chalk. Chalk. So it's not chalk, which is sometimes what I hear. Chalk. And that is used only on a blackboard. So chalk is for a blackboard, nothing else. A lot of people now have a whiteboard. A whiteboard is exactly the same as a blackboard, but it's white and it's plastic. And you will write on a whiteboard with a pen, a whiteboard pen or a whiteboard marker. So whiteboard pens or markers. I don't know why I capitalized that, I'll take that down. Some schools, if they're very posh, have an electronic whiteboard. Now I used to visit a lot of schools when I was younger, teaching um, educational, um, exam skills, study skills, that kind of thing. And in some schools, in one or two, they did have electronic whiteboards and they are very fancy. Although I must say that in some cases they would break. And when they break, it's a nightmare. And in one case, um, I didn't realize it was an electronic whiteboard and you're not supposed to write on the electronic whiteboard with ink. But I didn't realize it was electronic. And so I took my pen, <laughs> And I wrote on the whiteboard and everyone went, oh, oh no, <laughs> because I couldn't rub it off. <laughs> and I have made the mistake before as well to use the pen that was by the whiteboard that was just a permanent marker and not a whiteboard pen. So when you write on it, your writing stays there forever. And I have done that on a couple of occasions. It's horrendous. Anyway, never mind. It's all in the past. Nothing to worry about now. Um, what about a green board? I've never heard of a green board. Uh, sky, is it like a chalkboard? It's exactly like a chalkboard. A blackboard is a chalkboard. Okay. Um, what's the difference between detention and suspension? If you are suspended, then you are told to leave school for a certain amount of time. You are asked to leave school. Detention, you are detained for an hour. Um, if you are suspended, you are asked to leave school for maybe two weeks or a month, perhaps because you've been that bad. So you don't want to get suspended. Julia says, I like your nails, thank you. This is for my children's channel, because I was filming for my children's channel. So thank you very much. Um, although it's starting to peel. You see, it's coming off, I need to touch it up. All right, now we're moving on to phrases. Okay, I'm gonna try and get through this as quick as I can. I know these lessons become very long and some people find them boring. Let's carry on. A teacher might say to the class, listen up. Listen up. So that's a phrasal verb that we use all the time. You, rather than just saying listen, we say listen up. All right, everyone, listen up. I have an announcement to make. So listen up. If, if the children are being too noisy, you might tell them to quiet down. You might even tell adults this. I, I know as when I've been in rooms with adults, sometimes we're asked to quiet down, please, everyone, quiet down. Um, in a similar way, if they are being noisy or they're being a little bit too energetic, you might say, okay, settle down now. You're just asking them to be calm. So settle down, settle down. 
If you have asked for them to do some homework or to do some work during the lesson, and at the end of the lesson you want to receive the work, you might say to them, you need to hand in your work, okay? Everyone, class dismissed, but as you leave, please hand in your work. Please hand in your work, okay? So hand in. Opposite to hand out. If I ask you to hand things out for me, I'm asking you to go around and give out the books. So for example, I might give you a whole pile of books and say, can you hand these out to the class? And you go around and you hand them out. Or maybe you've done a test and I've marked your tests and now I'm going to hand out your results. Julia, there you go. Harrison, there you go. I'm handing out your results. Here we go. So I'm passing everybody their results. Um, English Vibe, would your children's channel be useful for really small children? My children's channel, if you are interested, will be for very young children, for tiny tots. From like babies up to maybe eight years old. Okay. Doesn't only listen work. So can you say just listen? Um, you can. Go, all right class, listen. But mostly we'd say listen up. And we'd have that, it's just easier to say listen up and it gives you that up and the children go huh so listen up okay let's carry on uh, da, da, da. so hand out hand in hand out take one and pass them along or take one and pass them down that's when you are at the front of the class or maybe you're in a circle or whatever it is whatever arrangement you're in in your class if you have a pile of books and you don't want one person to go around and hand them out, you could just pass them to the person at the front and say, take one and pass it down. Take one and pass it along. So they just take theirs and they pass the whole pile to the next person. So that's something we hear a lot in school. Take one and pass it down. Pass them down. You'll always be told to take a seat. In so many um, circumstances, not just in school, take a seat, take a seat, take a seat. Um, to pronounce calm down, we don't pronounce the letter L, is that right? That's right. L in calm is silent. So you just do a wide R. Calm. Ah, Amal has just made a good point. If you are in a very, very young school, if you're with preschool, nursery, or um, primary school ages, you might tell them, when you're being telling them to be quiet, you might say, put your fingers on your lips. Fingers on your lips, please and you get them to sit like this, I remember that, or hands on heads, if they've been naughty you might tell them to put their hands on their heads, obviously you would not use this for an adult class, or even for older children, they would um, be very upset about that I'm sure, okay let's jump back to the notes, you will be asked probably at the beginning of a class to open your textbook, text, text books, open your textbooks, and if the teacher is speaking at the front of the class and they want you to um, write it down they'll say okay everyone you need to take dictation I'm going to dictate to you now you need to write this down to take dictation to take dictation okay one of you has and so Marcelo has said I don't understand the difference between hand in and hand out just think of it like this to hand in is to give your work in. You've finished your work, you're giving it to the teacher. You hand it in. You've done it, you're giving it to the person who needs it, to hand in. If you are the teacher and you want to give the work out to the class, you hand out. Hand out. So I hand out the work, when you finish the work, you hand it in to me and I will mark it. Hope that helps. Okay. So, to take dictation is to write down what someone is saying, to take dictation. Um, Paluxio has said, at the front of the class or in front of the class, you can use both. Because you're physically at the front of the room, at the front of the classroom, but you're also in front of the class when we refer to the class as the pupils. So, the whole body of pupils in that room is the class. So I could say, hello class, that group of people is the class. So if you are in front of that group of people, you are in front of the class. So you can say, in front or at the front of the class. Um, 
I know I don't know how to pronounce this. Ray Ray N N N has made a good point. Hand in you can also think of as submit. To submit is to hand in. Okay, let's carry on. Um, you're often asked in class to read something aloud. To read aloud. Okay. Um, I think that's quite straightforward. You might be asked to complete an exercise. Okay, class, today you'll have to complete an exercise before I will dismiss you. Um, you might have a test. Now, I just wrote this down because I want you to be aware of the verbs that we use. You do a test or you have a test. You don't make a test. I've heard that before. We don't make a test. We do a test or we have a test. Do a test or have a test. Harrison has asked, do you have GCSEs in England? Yes, we do. Um, I know the education system keeps changing a lot here at the moment. Over the last decade, it's changed a few times, but we've, we've had GCSEs. And as far as I know, we still have GCSEs for high school students. Um, uh, da, 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 da. So if you make dictations, does that make you a dictator? Yes, I guess so, but not in the sense that you're thinking of. A dictator can be a ruler who rules a country by force. Um, a dictator who doesn't give the people any choice. Um, but in this case, obviously, the dictator is the person who is reading and you have to copy from. Um, Okay, let's carry on. Is this video real time? OMG, yes it is. Hello, welcome. Guys, if you are joining me for the first time and um, you're interested in learning English and you want to sound like a native and improve your fluency, then please do press the subscribe button and that bell notification button next to subscribe so you don't miss any future lessons. What I'm trying to do here is grow a community of English learners. We all try to help one another. I come live as often as I can and provide as many lessons as I can and I always listen to your suggestions. And so you're in the right place. Let's carry on so that we're not here past dinner time. So when you've done a test or an exercise, you have completed or finished that exercise. I've completed the exercise, I've finished the exercise. So you might be you set an exercise in lessons, you finish it really quickly and you go, excuse me, miss, I've finished the exercise. And your teacher might say, good, you can just relax for 10 minutes until the end of class. And you go, yes, I'm very happy. Um, what I spoke about before, I thought I should just note it down. My pencil is blunt, is when the pencil doesn't work, when the lead has broken or it's been used too much without a sharpener. And the pencil is sharp, is the opposite to blunt. Um, you have a sharp pencil. Okay, um, then the word detention I mentioned before. I just want you to know that the verb that we use is to get. You get a detention. I gave him a detention. He had a detention. You can also say that. Um, but um, I got a detention is what you would normally say. You might come home and go, oh, I had a really bad day. I got a detention for speaking when the teacher was speaking. I got a detention for chewing gum. Or I got a detention for not doing my homework. And I, as the mother, you might say, I can't believe you got a detention. You always get a detention from that teacher. You have to try harder. Okay. So if you are really, really naughty and you're suspended, then you might be suspended. Suspended. You might be excluded or removed. These are the different words that would be used. To be suspended, to be excluded, or to be removed from school. And if you have a test or exam, then you would sit a test or take. Mm, yeah, take. You take a test, you take an exam, or you sit a test, sit an exam. Both the same. Um, the difference between tests and exams Ah, do you know what? I think, I don't know. I would say that an exam is more official um, and a test is just a short-term gauge of how you're doing um, to measure your performance. But I think an exam, you get a certificate at the end of. Uh, so I think they can be used interchangeably, but I think exam is definitely much more official. 
you don't do GCSE tests, you do GCSE exams. I've got an exam today. Uh, uh, I only ever got one detention in my life, says Harrison. Good. A quiz is something completely different. Um, a quiz is not serious. A quiz is usually for fun. Okay. Um, I know in America they say pop quiz. They have a pop quiz quite often in schools. We don't really use that phrase. Right, back to the notes. So, talking to the teacher or talking to the students. So, students. These are some of the things you would say to the teacher. Um, teachers are referred to as Mr. Smith or Sir. So if it's a man, you call him by his second name. Mr. Smith, Mr. Jones, Mr. Harrison, if Harrison was your surname, that is. Um, or they might just call you Sir. Excuse me, Sir, can I ask a question? If it's a lady, you would either call her Miss Smith if she's not married, or Mrs. Smith, if she is married, or Ms. Smith, if she doesn't want you to know her marital status. Maybe she's divorced or something, or separated, or just shy about it. Or you would call her Miss. Now, if the teacher is Mrs. Smith, but you're just going to say Miss, you wouldn't say Mrs., Mrs, because Mrs on its own sounds rude. I don't know why, it just is. If I say Miss, hey, Mrs, it seems rude. So you wouldn't ever call the teacher, excuse me, Mrs, you just call her Miss, even if she's married, and even if you'd normally call her Mrs Smith, thank you, Mrs Smith, you'd call her Miss. Mrs Smith, Miss, that's what you call it. In some schools, they prefer you to call her Mom, I have seen that in a few schools in the UK, but very few, very few. I know a lot of you here call me mom. I find it a little bit old fashioned. So I would just expect you to call me Anna because I've given you permission to call me Anna. I am Anna, so call me Anna, okay? Some of you are already asking. Um, but why, uh, but why, but we don't use Mrs. No, that's right, we don't use Mrs. Don't ever use Mrs. on its own. It just seems rude. Okay, let's carry on. So you might say, if you're outside the classroom, you're queuing up, you might say, may, may we come in? Or can we come in? So you're asking if you can enter the classroom. Can we come in? May we come in? Um, you might apologise for being late. So you say, I'm sorry I'm late. It's just pretty standard. I'm sorry I'm late. Um, and you might you might have an excuse. So the excuse might be that you were... You were held back by a previous teacher. So you might say, I had to stay behind. I'm sorry I'm late, I had to stay behind. So to stay behind is to stay on later at a previous class. Um, you might say, Mr. Smith kept me behind after class. Mr. Smith kept me behind after class. That's why I'm late. You might ask, where should I sit? Where should I sit? Um, I'm just going to come back to some of your questions here. One of you is saying mistress. You never call someone mistress. A mistress is somebody who, a lady, who um, is having an affair with a married man. So a married man has a mistress. So never call someone a mistress. <laughs> okay? That, someone would take offence to that, I'm sure. Um... Okay, some of you are feeling tired, are going to go because it's quite late in some countries. I, I appreciate that. The lesson is coming to an end, I promise. Um, is it okay to ask, how were you as a young student, Anna, socially and studies? Um, I was actually a good student. I, I wasn't overly clever. I wasn't the brightest student in the class, but I, I worked hard and I did very well. Um, is it a, uh, to flunk? To flunk is to, um, to fail. If you flunk a class... Uh, I mean, I don't, we don't use, hang on, let me check it, flunk, if you flunk an exam, I know you flunk an exam, it is an American term, um, to fail to reach the standard in an exam, so yeah, you flunk it, you flunk an exam, you fail an exam, um, but we don't really use it in the UK. All right, back to the notes, so, um, where should I sit? If you've forgotten your pen, which many students do, you'd say, can I borrow a pen? Can I please borrow a pen would be nice. Can I please borrow a pen? 
or please can I? You could do please at the beginning. Um, you could say, oh no, I forgot my book. What can I do? You might say, excuse me, could I please, could you please explain that again? Lots of you ask me, could you please explain that again? And I'd say, of course I can. If you didn't hear it properly, then you could say, could you repeat that please, sir? Could you repeat that, could you repeat that please, miss? Of course, if you don't understand, you can simply say, I don't understand, or I don't follow you. These two phrases are exactly the same. I don't follow you. I, I'm, not, I'm not following. You can say that. I'm not following. I don't follow you. I don't understand. Help me. Explain it to me. You could say, I have a question. How tall are you? I have a question. What is the capital of the UK? Okay. Um, you could say, could you bring, could you please check my work? Could you please check my answers? Could you please check my spelling? So to check, you're asking for validation from the teacher. Could you please check it to make sure it's okay? You might just ask for help. You could say, uh, could you help me please? Can you help me please? Both are the same. Could sounds a little more polite, but they're both the same pretty much. Um, and you might just say, Miss, I'm stuck, or Sir, I'm stuck. So if you're struggling and you don't, you can't get any further by yourself and you're having a really hard time, you just go, Miss, Miss, I'm stuck. Or, sir, Sir, can you help me? I'm stuck. So it just means I can't go any further without your help. You need to help me. Um, okay. You could just say also, I find this difficult. I find this really difficult. Could you help me? Could you explain this again? As many of you ask me to do, you could ask someone to slow down. Could you please slow down? Um, yes, explain is like spelling something out. Could you explain it? Could you go into more detail? Could you please speak slowly? Please speak slowly. That's what lots of you ask me to do here. And generally, I, sp I speak at normal pace um, to help you with your listening skills. Then you might ask, how do you pronounce, and then the word, how do you pronounce this word? How do you pronounce blah, blah, blah? <laughs> or you might ask, what does this mean? What does, and you might write the word or say the word, what does um, flabbergasted mean? You might ask, what is the deadline? Or when is the deadline? So you can say both, what is the deadline? When is the deadline? Or when is this work due in? Exactly the same question there. All right, how are we doing? Are we doing good? Oh gosh, we've just gone over an hour. I'm sorry about that. I'm going to try and speed through the very last little section here now, and then I will say goodbye and go and get my dinner. So teachers, the kind of things that you'll say, you might say to the children, put your hand up if you know. So. Put your hand up if you know what the capital of Spain is. Put your hand up if you know what my middle name is. And you're just asking the children to show their hand to say that they know the answer and then you'll choose someone and go, uh, yes. And then they'll tell you the answer. Put your hand up if. You can also use put your hand up if you're just asking to see a show of hands. So it might not be that you're asking them to say something. You might just be like, put your hand up if you like green. Oh, most of you like green. Put your hand up if you're learning English. Ah, most of you are learning English. You see? You might also say to your class, who can tell me, so in the same way, you're asking for an answer, who can tell me what is the capital of Spain? Who can tell me what is my middle name? So you're asking them for an answer. If they then start shouting out, to shout out is just to suddenly shout, then you go, ah, ah, put your hands up, please. Let me see your hands up. Now I'll ask you. So to shout out, we should add that to the list. Um, in fact, I'll write it here. Uh, oh dear. Who can tell me? Please don't shout out. Please don't shout out. 
If somebody is late, you might say, where have you been? Where have you been? Why are you late? Hopefully they'll have a good excuse. Then you might ask the class, who would like to explain to the class what we've been discussing? Who would like to explain to the class what we learnt yesterday? Who would like to explain to the class pi, 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 how we find pi? <laughs> yeah, or something like that. Some, some, some question that requires a little explanation. So then you might say, if, if the children are being very naughty, and they're not listening and they're wasting time. You might be getting fed up and you're like, it's your time you're wasting. It's playtime now, but I'm not going to let you go out to play until you've all settled down and stopped talking. I mean, it's, it's your playtime you're wasting, not mine. I've heard that from teachers so many times. So it's your time you're wasting, not mine. If you hear some students talking at the back of class and they are talking about something, and they're talking privately and then they're disturbing the class, then the teacher might say, do you, fancy do you fancy sharing that with the rest of the class? Do you? Do you want to tell us what it is you're talking about? It's obviously more important than what I have to say. Please, share. <laughs> So that's obviously the teacher being very annoyed that the people at the back have been talking while he's talking. Do you fancy sharing that with the rest of the class? Um, and then you have the phrase, this is your final warning or this is your last warning. And this is when your teacher has lost patience. They've already warned you once or twice and now they're saying, this is your final warning. If you do it again, you're going to the headmaster's office. If you do it again, you're going to get a detention. All right? So I'll not tell you again. It's your final warning. And then the very last one on my list is, I expect you to be on your best behavior or I need you to be on your best behavior. So if someone's visiting or if, you're, if something special is happening, you might say, look, please be on your best behavior. And we use those words, be on your behavior. Be on your best behavior. Or you might say, I was on my best behavior. I was on my best behavior. But we always use on with best behavior. Okay, my mouth is very sore. So I need to go and put some medicine on this. I'll take a few questions now before saying goodbye. Thank you so much for joining me, everybody. Um, I'll just say it one more, one more time. If you're not subscribed, please do click that button and the bell. And um, if you haven't already, then please do give this video a thumbs up. Now, there are lots of links in the description box below um, to products that I think you might find helpful, to free trials. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware, but Amazon are offering lots of 30-day free trials at the moment for things like audiobooks, which are great for English listening, and to um, streaming music. Learning English through music is also great, as well as streaming films. For 30 days, you can get for free. It's really, really helpful to entertain yourself while trying to learn. It helps you to take stuff on board quicker. So if you're not already signed up to any of those Amazon trials, then I suggest you give it a go. It's free. And at the end of the trial, you can just cancel it if you don't want to carry on. Um, so the links for those are in the description below, plus links to my social media. Do come and join me on Instagram and Facebook. I try and keep up to date there, letting you know about when I'm next live and things like that. Um, if you feel like you'd like to contribute to this channel and help grow the channel, um, there's a couple of things you can do besides watching my videos. Of course, there are over a hundred here at the moment, so do take time to look at the old lessons. Um, but you could also give me your language. I'm looking for anyone willing to translate for me. So um, it could be just a moment of your time or if you have a little extra time and you enjoy translating, you enjoy working with English in your language, then all you have to do is click the link on the contributions um, section in the description box below and choose where you feel you'd like to translate, whether it's just a title of a video or a description of a video or even the whole set of subtitles. And in fact, you could even potentially add 
English subtitles to my videos. At the moment they get automatic subtitles which aren't always accurate and unfortunately I don't have the time to always go and correct them. So if you feel your English is super advanced and you feel that you could write or correct the auto, auto subtitles then I would very much appreciate you giving your time to do that. And um, those of you asking which languages, I need all languages. If you translate into your language, then you are helping the people in your country to access these videos. So um, all languages are acceptable and needed and wanted. Um, I'm gonna say a quick goodbye to my patrons. What are you saying here? Um, is there a difference between can I ask and may I ask? No, they're both the same, although may I ask sounds a little more polite. Okay. Um, is there, is that the is that same to say raise your hand if instead of put your hand up if? Exactly the same, Georgie. Um, raise your hand if you've got a question, put your hand up if you've got a question. They're both the same. So good point. Thanks for raising that. Okay, so do we have any questions here? What's the dissertation? A dissertation is a, a written piece of work that you do at the end of your degree. So at university, you'll finish, you have to hand in a certain amount of work, and you always have to provide a dissertation, which is like thousands of words. I can't remember, like, I can't remember. I did a dissertation, I can't remember. 10,000 words, something like that, on a chosen subject. Um, uh, were you teacher's pet, Anna? Yes, I probably was in some classes. I definitely was in some classes. Um, what do you call a student who only gets good marks and somebody who always gets bad marks? Um, if someone gets bad marks, you might call them a dunce or you might say they're a bit slow or slow learner. A dunce is not a nice word though. I wouldn't call anyone a dunce. Um, but you might say they're a slow learner. If someone is really, really good, you might just say they're an excellent student or they're a, a, a star pupil, a star pupil. Um, uh, what is the opposite of a teacher's pet? Ooh, I don't think there is one. I don't think there's a word for the opposite to a teacher's pet. A teacher's nightmare, perhaps. Um, do British students often change classes at school? Uh, what do you mean? What do you mean? I mean, they go from classroom to classroom throughout the day to visit their different teachers and do their different subjects. Is that what you mean? Uh, anyway. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, in America, we call this a thesis. Yes, a thesis instead of a dissertation in America. That's right. Um, your nails look like a rainbow. La. <laughs> Thank you. Um, what's the... Uh, do, uh, do, da, da, da. Um, pronounce the difference between control and to control. Control and to control. Uh, I don't know what that word is, Bernardo, I'm sorry, so I can't help you. Uh, yes, the pronunciation of my, my surname is Tyree, Tyree. Um, what is the difference between till and until? They're both the same. They're both the same, it's just one's a shorter version. Okay. All right, guys. Um, in Spain, in Spain. All right, lovely. I'm going to, I'm going to say goodbye. I'm going to say goodbye. It's been a very long lesson, and um, I don't like to keep you too long. Oh, sorry. I need to go and eat. I need to go and put some medicine on this. This sore. It's very sore. Um, thank you so much for joining me. I hope to see you again next week. I am moving house next week, so. For the next two weeks now, you're going to have to bear with me. I will be hopefully releasing a video later tonight. So if, depending what time frame you're in, you might be waking up to a new video or going to bed with a new video, but there'll be a new short lesson later this evening. Um, otherwise, I may do a lesson on Monday, but you'll have to join me on Facebook and Instagram to know exactly when that will be. And I'll try my best to do as much as I can next week, but you'll have to just, two weeks, be aware, that I'm going to be all over the place with my move. All right, guys. Love you lots. Lots of love from London. Have a lovely evening. Sleep well. Goodbye.